when I first started working, I stayed in a place called Toc H, which was a sort of men's hostel kind of thing. There was a lot of old guys staying there, um, but there was a group of about six or seven young fellas, and uh, we had a lot of fun together. They were a good bunch. There was one particular guy that stayed there, his name was Datlabs. And Datlabs um, was and is still a very good friend of mine. But Datlabs, we called him that because he worked for a company that used to send him out into the bush for weeks at a time. And when he, when he went out to the bush, he had a box that was full of every manner of medicine and drug that you could think of. Say, so you know, treating malaria and bilharzia and colds and flus and constipation and diarrhea, anything that you can think of, Dat Labs had a drug for it inside that box. They're like a walking chemist. So that's why we called them Dat Labs. Dat Labs was the name of a drug company in Zimbabwe. But Dat Labs was a prankster. You're a little shit. If you weren't watching him closely, he would do stuff to you or do stuff to your stuff. And although it was often really, really funny, <laughs> quite often the outcomes weren't. So I'll give you an example. One day he got into my room and I had a jar of Milo and he took Brooklax, which it looks like a it looks like a bar of chocolate, but it's actually a really strong laxative. And he chopped it up into little little pieces and he mixed it in with my Milo. And so for the next month or so, I had the most terrible diarrhea. I was shitting through the eye of a needle and my ass was hanging in tatters. <laughs> little bastard. Another time he got into um, this guy Pete, he got into his room and took all of his clothes out of his cupboards and drawers and tied them together in a long line and then he decorated the room for Christmas. It was very silly but very funny. So he was a prankster and one day he was going off on one of his trips and we decided we were going to get him back. So after he had gone, we got into his room and we went to his underwear drawer and we took out all of his dacks and we rubbed chili on the inside of them and we folded them ni up nicely and put them back in his drawer. And when Dat Labs came back the first morning, we were sitting having breakfast and he was sitting there looking a little troubled and he was like moving around and shuffling and every now and then scratching his meat and two veg. And I said to him, Labs, you okay? Yeah, 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 no, all good. Yeah, 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 no, I'm all good. And the next, the next morning, he was looking even more troubled. A bit of sweat on his brow, and he was shuffling around, lots of scratching. I said, Labs, are you okay? He said, yeah, 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 no, guys, I'm all, I'm all good. I'm all good. And the third day, man, he was in, he was in serious disarray. Yeah, he was walking like John Wayne after having been a long horse ride. Yeah, and he was scratching and his face was sweating and I said to him, Labs, what the hell is going on with you, man? What's wrong? And he said, man, I've got, I got a problem, but it's really embarrassing. I said, well, what's that? He said, now, come, I'll show you. So he went to his room and he took out his omelet and <coughs> <coughs> this thing was all red and it was swollen and it was just looking nasty. And I said, fuck and hell, dude, what is going on with your junk? He said, I don't know, it's just started happening. He said to him, man, that, that, looks, that looks really bad. You need to go see a doctor. No, no, no. I said, but no, buddy, it looks like you've got an STD. So while you were out in the bush, were you, you know, entertaining the local ladies? No, no, don't do that sort of thing. I said, Labs, that, that looks like an STD to me. Seriously, you need to go see the quack. <coughs> so he refused. Next day, I pressured him, he refused. Day after that, pressured him, he refused. Eventually, he was in such a state of disarray that he agreed to go and see the doctor. And while he was at the doctor, apparently he got in a bit of a row with the doctor because the, the doc said to him, well, there's definitely some kind of serious irritation going on there. 
that it could well be an STD. No, 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 no. So they argued, and <laughs> so, so eventually the doctor said, "Well, look, we'll we'll treat the STD, and if that's not what's causing the problem, then no harm, no foul. We'll just carry on and find out what it is." So for the next week, Dat Labs had to go back to the doctor every day and get a penicillin shot in his bum. Now that was very funny. <laughs> that was very funny. And if you do the sums in your head, you know, it, was a, it was a good five days before Dat Labs went to go and see the quack. And then he had a week of penicillin shots. And by that time, which would have been about two weeks, all of his undies had been through the wash. And so all of the chili had been washed up. And miraculously, with the penicillin shots, his STD cleared up. <laughs> so, so poor Dat Labs had to suffer through an STD which he somehow caught. <laughs> and then all the penicillin was, it was very good. And you know what? We never told him. We never told him. For the next 30 years, we've kept it a secret and just taken the piss out of him. We're having an STD, which he denies, but we say to him, now, the, look, the evidence is clear. He got all inflamed and you had to go for penicillin shots and it cleared up. You, you were messing around while you were in the bush. <laughs> That's very funny. A 30 year old joke. So Labs, if you ever watch this, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't have an STD. It was us. We got you back. <laughs> yeah, you little prick. <laughs> it was very funny to me. Anyway, love you.